Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit. I'm CP and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Perdomo 20th Anniversary Sun Grown. For those of you who regularly watch our videos, as you can see I've sort of changed the setup a little bit. I'm trying out a couple of new things. I was getting a bit sick of being stuck in the corner there and I was starting to feel a bit claustrophobic. I'm also going to be conducting this review using the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula, but I'm going to be doing it a bit differently this time. I'm actually going to be doing this as my first sample of the cigar, and then the write-up, which is already published and in the description below, is going to be after sampling two more of this cigar, so then you'll be able to have a better idea of my final conclusion. So this is going to be more of a uh, first sample, a first test, and my initial thoughts. And of course, the Podomo 20th Anniversary Sun Grown was stored in the Bovado Credit Humidor that you can just about see behind me uh, next to the green uh, chair over there. They were stored using 69% Bovado packs and were monitored closely with a Bovado butler. So following the Perdomo 20th Anniversary Connecticut review, I'm now moving on to the Sun Grown. And uh, like, the, uh, like the Connecticut, this was made in Esseli, Nicaragua, in uh, the Perdomo factory, which is also known as El Monstro due to its sheer size. I believe it's 8,500 meters squared of factory floor. The construction method used is a handmade accordion, and it's a Nicaraguan puro consisting only of Nicaraguan sun-grown leaves. Now, I don't know exactly what varieties were used, but I believe it is a combination of the Podomo family's uh, crops from Esteli, Condega, and Jalapa. The wrapper has been aged for eight years, like the Connecticut, and then has undergone, I believe, ten months rather than eight months of bourbon barrel aging. Jumping into the look and feel, as you can see I have uh, this Epicure 6x56 in my hand. So first of all we're looking at a very uh, smooth roll overall, however you will detect a couple of spot, soft spots underneath the wrapper. In terms of spring, it's a little bit on the soft side, but that being said, unlike the Connecticut, it does have a slight box press finish. The hue is a mild mocha color, it's not too dark, it's nothing like the Maduro that we'll be reviewing in another video. And it does uh, give off the light with a slight reflection, so you do have a mild oily sheen. In terms of veins, it's quite refined, they are not uh, overly rustic in any way. And the aromas that I have off the foot and the body, indeed, consist of salted caramel, some tonka bean, and cinnamon. Moving on to the pre-light, as you can see, I have already given this a straight cut. The draw is ideal, it gives just the right amount of resistance, despite being a little bit soft on the spring. The uh, flavours are quite uh, rich, it does give a pleasant bouquet, although much milder than the Connecticut, which is quite surprising. And in this case, there was Ledanum, so a vegetal, uh, lusk, uh, a vegetal musk, some Ambergris, which is uh, a natural musk, that is reminiscent of pipe tobacco and leather, and a hint of salted caramel that leaves a slight residue on the lips of the wrapper. With that being said, I suppose now is the time to light it up. So the reason I've moved things around is because we've had a couple of comments that uh, we're just basically um, reading off our notes uh, after having had the cigar and we don't give our thoughts as we're smoking it. Um, my argument has always been that we've smoked it several times and we're giving a more accurate uh, overview of the cigar and the experience that it offers, but I do understand your thoughts and I thought I'd try it this way around to see what sort of results we get. Similarly, as you can see, the wall behind me is a little bit bare. Indeed, I've been wanting to redecorate this room for quite some time uh, and I guess this has given me the occasion to get on with it. I'll leave the wallpaper for now because I'm not up for the work involved, but I'll add a couple of things on the wall. I do have a couple of relevant decorations that I can add. I'm now about halfway through the first third and I'm very impressed with the uh, 20th anniversary sun grown. Unlike the Connecticut that was very spicy all the way through from the opening, the sun grown is far more complex and offers a somewhat nuanced bouquet. It uh, is dominated by a hint of rosewood, which is much like the Connecticut itself. However, rather than being uh, overt notes of spices, we're instead uh, greeted with some nutmeg, which is going to be a little bit more gourmand and easier on the palate. There is a hint of citrus, and I would liken this to maybe a yuzu paste, 
but it's not um, citrusy in the uh, zesty sense. I have noticed a, a couple of burn issues, and I'm going to talk about this more in the burn later on, but as you can see, uh, the uh, underside is burning at a faster rate than uh, the upper side. I'll probably have to touch this up, which is a shame because I like to keep the ash and uh, be able to analyze that as I smoke. So we'll see how this goes. One reason that I don't like to touch up cigars is that I always want to give them a chance to correct themselves. And indeed, the burn has somewhat improved on the uh, 20th anniversary sun grown. As you can see, there are some slight burning issues. In fact, you know, it's quite a dip here, uh, but it's better than it was earlier, especially when I de-ashed it um, unintentionally. It plopped off all over my desk. But that's not the point. Um, the second third uh, enters a far more, uh, far woodier uh, bouquet, rather than there being some hints of spice and citrus, now we're greeted with some deeply gourmand notes. Uh, oak dominates the second third overall, and you can really feel that transition from the first to the second. Uh, Argo wood or an oud is going to also be quite present, which is going to produce a uh, leathery and resinous bouquet. And there's also a hint of coffee ground, which is particularly noticeable in the retrohale as you're smoking it. That being said, I do find the uh, second third to be a little bit on the dry side. Uh, indeed, um, it is a little bit astringent, uh, quite tart. So I've had to um, I've had to drink some water. Uh, going through the second third, which was not the case of the Connecticut. And what's quite interesting is that from what I know, or from what I've read, the, um, the Sun Grown, the Maduro, and the Connecticut are the same uh, blend of filler and binder. The only difference is the wrapper. So this is a great example of how the wrapper can really influence the overall blend of a cigar. So now we're into the final third, and as you can see, the burning issues have not subsided. In fact, they've continued, and I should have really touched this up, but I wanted to show you just for the sake of this review. Uh, the oak and the ground coffee notes persist all the way through uh, the final third. Of course, there's still the nub, but I imagine it's not going to change. However, there isn't any argwood anymore. Instead, this has been replaced by some black pepper. The uh, black pepper is particularly potent and quite present on the retro hail. The oval cigar is quite complex and it produces a nice velvety mouthfeel that does leave a slight uh, residue on the palate. The astringent is a little bit on the dry side, so I would suggest that you have some sort of a beverage to, to keep you um, moist. And in terms of stimulation, it is relatively balanced all the way through. Although I did notice that it tended to focus on the exterior of the palate at the beginning of the cigar and then uh, focused into the center towards the end. As for the life cycle, there is a discernible evolution throughout the cigar. Uh, it does have distinctive thirds, although the, the final third and the second third are quite close in terms of the overall experience. Although it builds in body uh, in the, third, uh, the final third, the second third is going to be a little bit more harmonious. The finish uh, is quite lingering. It does last on the palate for quite a while. I would recommend, uh, given that this is quite a dry and potent cigar, uh, enjoying a palate cleanser with it, such as an espresso coffee. As for the residual scent in the room, it is quite pleasant. I've been smoking this with the windows closed and occasionally using an air filter, uh, an air purifier to uh, clear, the, uh, clear the smoke out, but it is quite a pleasant and um, woody, spicy smell. When it comes to the overall burn, so aside from the burning issues which I've been telling you uh, throughout the smoking experience, the draw uh, remains consistent and is quite ideal. The temperature of the smoke remains cool all the way down and the ash backbone, while it can be a little bit flaky, I did have it plop off uh, somewhere around the second third. Uh, as you can see here, it's going to cling on for a while uh, except for when I touch it up. Um, and finally, when it comes to the overall experience of the cigar, now I'm quite fond of these uh, large bands. I think they're quite stylish. However, uh, given that these uh, should look like they are two distinctive separate band, a primary band and a, a secondary band here, it does. it is quite large on the cigar. And it's a shame that you can't easily remove this bit while you're smoking it down just to keep some ornamentation for longer. Uh, some might feel that it is a little bit too uh, ostentatious, uh, however, I think it's still quite tasteful. In fact, it's probably more tasteful than Con Connecticut, which was louder. When it comes to the box, so I have this interesting uh, presentation box here, 
which consists of five cigars, which makes it a great celebratory uh, presentation. Uh, you could certainly take this to a special occasion, like a bachelor party. Each cigar is uh, individually um, packaged in a small cardboard tube, well, small, and uh, it echoes the colours of the band. It's quite stylish, very nice. I, I certainly like the way this is presented. So I don't have the 24 count cigar box, which is made out of wood. As for the overall value of the cigar, so you're looking at an RRP of about $9.25 per stick. However, you can get them for less, especially if you buy them in a whole box for about a dollar less. And occasionally, but rarely, they are on sale online. And when it comes to the occasion of the cigar, like I said, this does have the makings of a good celebratory cigar that you could take to a special occasion, such as a wedding or a bachelor party, or even New Year's Eve. Uh, however, it is going to be a little bit more challenging for the beginner. Even though the Connecticut was very, very spicy, it, it would have been easier, it would be easier for uh, uh, an inexperienced smoker or an occasional smoker. This one is going to have a lot more body and maybe a little bit too challenging for certain palates. Finally, when it comes to the uh, pairings. Now this is a consideration that we have at the end of every review. It's not scored, it's just something to bear in mind when you're in the market for this cigar. So the first thing I suggested, uh, well, well, there is the usual sp suspect of dark chocolate and indeed given that this is quite a gourmand cigar all the way through dark chocolate would be a very wonderful pairing you could go for something that's quite high in uh, cacao such as an 85 to 90 percent otherwise a carpaccio di manzo so uh, a beef carpaccio would be very pleasant especially if the meat has been properly cured otherwise walnuts fresh or uh, roasted but I would prefer fresh would go very nicely with the cigar especially that uh, bitterness uh, would pair well with some of these cigars flavors. When it comes to beverages, uh, you probably go for an espresso. An espresso would be very pleasant, especially the thick syrupiness of uh, a very nice um, uh, ristretto, for example. That would be a pleasant pairing. Otherwise, a cognac, and I have here uh, a Hein uh, Rare Original. This VSOP is a fine champagne cognac, which is very pleasant indeed, and uh, has the gourmand and sort of deep notes that would pair well with the cigar's overall experience. Otherwise, if you're quite fond of wine, you could perhaps consider a Pinot Noir, but avoid Pinot Noirs from, uh, from Europe, so especially France. A Burgundy, for example, would be too high in acidity. Instead, I would recommend something from maybe Oregon or California instead. That's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like the new format or you have any thoughts about it, please let us know in the comments. I quite enjoyed doing it this way, especially the setup and uh, directly off the uh, cigar formula as opposed to having already printed it out. Uh, I think this was a different approach and it helped me uh, give you my freshest thoughts about the cigar as I was smoking it. But I would love to hear what you think, so let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed it, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe for more men's lifestyle content again in the future. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.